I mean, I'll give you an example. Recently, I heard on the late night on the news there was an advertisement for a television program. And on this morning television program, they said they were going to have an expert who does five-minute phobia cures. Well, that's pretty much how I became famous. I got on television and basically eliminated people's phobias right there on camera. So I figured, hey, maybe it's one of my students. Or maybe it's one of the psychiatrists or psychologists I've trained. The next morning, I tuned in on the show, and it wasn't one of my own students. This guy had a totally different technique for eliminating phobias. And here's what it was. First of all, they brought this man on. He was a psychologist. And they brought him on, and they said, look, okay, he's going to eliminate this man's phobia. And the man came up, and he said, this man has a phobia to snakes. Sir, how do you feel about snakes? The man said, not very good. <laughs> wow, well, major phobia. When I deal with people with a phobia, I look for somebody who's out of control, you know, somebody who's screaming and that stuff. I thought he didn't exactly pick a real challenging subject, but okay, here we go. So then he's going to test it. So I figured, you know, what I've done on a regular basis is go out and I grab a real snake and just scare the heck out of somebody and see that it really works. And then I test it afterwards to see if it works by handing them the snake and having them wrap it around their body. In fact, I did it with a giant boa constrictor in a couple of television shows that when I first saw the boa constrictor, I had to work on my neuroassociations. <laughs> but anyway... The bottom line is this guy brings out a plastic snake. And he brings a snake and he pushes in front of the guy and goes, <laughs> and The guy looks and goes, oh. And I go, all right, well, let's see what he's going to do. So sure enough, this is on national television. Sure enough, the guy reaches out and he goes, what I'm going to do with this man is a technique called temporal tapping. What he does is he has the man stand there and he says, okay, sir, I want you to think about snakes. He takes his fingers and he starts smacking this guy on the side of his head on his temples. He goes, wham, 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 think about snakes, wham, 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 think about snakes, wham, 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 think about snakes, wham, wham, wham. Well, after doing this about five or six times, the guy goes, do you feel any different? The man goes, yeah, my head hurts. <laughs> he said, but do you feel any different about snakes? He goes, well, I don't think so. He goes, all right, think about snakes, wham, 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 think about snakes, wham, wham, wham. And what is this man doing if it works? He's interrupting this man's pattern of association in his nervous system. Are you following me? In other words, this man used to think of snakes and get this unbelievable, painful fear feeling in his gut. Now, instead, he's got this pain in his head. <laughs> now, that may not sound like much, but it is a change, and it will take him out of fear. Well, the guy did it over and over again, and it didn't work. All of a sudden, this psychologist breaks out into this massive sweat on national television. He's having a pain called failure on national TV. And all of a sudden, my heart goes out to him. I thought, nobody wants to be in this situation, right? They say, all right, we're going to cut to a commercial, and then we'll come back. Meanwhile, he's still going, think about the snakes, wham, 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 think about the snakes, wham, wham, wham. But when they come back from the commercial, we don't see the man with the snake phobia, and there's no mention of what happened. Instead, there's a new woman here, and she has a phobia to ladders. And so he says, okay, now think about ladders, wham, 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 think about ladders, wham, 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 think about ladders, wham, wham, wham. And he keeps doing this over and over again. He says, do you feel any different? She goes, well, yeah. He goes, now, and you could see she did feel different. She didn't look as scared. Think about ladders, wham, wham, wham. After three or four minutes or five minutes of this, maybe a little bit more, they finally bring out this ladder, and they ask her to climb up it. Well, she walks over. She goes, yeah, I think I can do it. I feel different. She takes a step on the first step, then the second step, then about the third step, and she kind of gets a little scared, but she kind of stays on the third step, and then she comes on down. Well, the audience claps like crazy, and the host of the show comes over and says, hey, that was really great. Well, you must really be proud of yourself. She goes, yeah, I'm not only proud, I'm excited. Because you know what? My husband said that if this therapist guy could help me and I could get up at least three stairs, that he'd give me a shopping spree and he would paint the whole house. Interesting. She walked in with leverage. It was a must for her. Because for her, being able to do this meant she could have lots of pleasure and get out of some pain. Pretty hot deal. So no wonder step one was handled. So all this man to do is step two and step three fell into place. And the problem is when you go to a therapist and it doesn't happen, it's because they don't have leverage on you or they haven't interrupted your pattern, or you haven't created a new pattern. So just go through those steps for yourself, and you probably don't need a therapist 99.9% .9 of the time, and I think most therapists would agree with me on this. What's interesting about this story, though, is, is the host turned back to this guy, and they had like three minutes left in the show, and he said, well, one out of two sure isn't bad, and that's a pretty good deal, but why don't you go here and work with John some more, because we didn't get the result with him. Let's see if you can pull it off. And he goes, no, 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 he says, uh, I think John's problem is that he's sick and, you know, it's, he's probably got a virus so that when I'm doing this, it's affecting his way his body is processing this. And John says, I don't got a virus. <laughs> and he says, well, you know, he may not know it, but he probably has one. John says, no, no, no. The host says, well, come on over. Why don't you go ahead and work on him anyway? And the guy goes, oh, all right. And he gets up there and wham, wham, wham. Think about snakes. Wham, wham, wham. Think about snakes. Wham, wham. Nothing works, right? 
finally at the end, right, the guy's sweating like crazy. And he said, you know, I think I could help him in private. I think he's just uncomfortable because all these people are watching him. And the guy goes, I'm not uncomfortable. <laughs> I thought this poor therapist, he's getting beat up here, right? He's going to have a phobia to going on TV shows after this. But the bottom line is, finally, right, the show's about to end. And this gentleman who had the phobia says, you know, I think the only reason I'm not changing is I don't really want to. I thought, what better example that leverage was missing? So those are the three keys to neuroassociative conditioning. Use them well and you can make any change you want in your life because you understand the key elements that will make the change happen now, not six months from now or a year from now. And I want you to know, I know there's a lot to absorb here, so you might want to listen to it again. 